This video is titled, How Dak Prescott's Contract Kills the Cowboys' Future. I'm about to dive real deep into some Dallas Cowboys salary cap analytics right here. Let's do it. Welcome to the source. Hey, get the source. The source. Source. The source. Hey, get the source. All right, before I get started, I want to mention that I am a Cowboys fan. I'm a big Cowboys fan, have been my whole life. I'm also a big Dak Prescott fan. The reason I need to say that first, I just want everyone to know that this isn't some hater video or anything like that. Uh, just because I'm a Cowboys fan doesn't mean I'm going to pretend everything they do is awesome. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to look at is the salary cap for the Cowboys in the year 2023, two years from right now. And I'll get you why we're looking at this year specifically in just a minute. You can see here, I've put all 17 players that the Cowboys have under contract in 2023 into this pie chart right here. So this is every single player the Cowboys have in 2023 as of right now. Um, there are 17 of them totaling $201 million as far as a cap hit goes. Now, if you're familiar with the NFL salary cap, when you heard that number, you just stopped right there and said, wait, that can't be right. No, it is. 201 million from 17 players. Right now, the salary cap is at $182.5 million. So yeah, in 2023, the Cowboys are already over the cap with just 17 players. There's still 35 more players that need to be brought in under contract for Dallas until they can even field a roster, until they can even take the field. They need 35 more players to, fill, to make 52 and they're already over the cap. So my question is, what's gonna happen with the Cowboys in the next couple years? Well, first we need to incorporate that the salary cap is gonna increase. Of course, we can't leave that out. If you go by the last eight years or so, the salary cap increases by about 10, 11, 12, somewhere between 10 and 12 million a year. Uh, obviously besides this last year, because of COVID it went down, uh, but that was that's the outlier. It always goes up about 10 to 12 million. But I've read some reports that saying the salary cap could be as high as 200 million next year. That'd be an $18 million increase, the highest increase ever in the history of the NFL. I even saw a couple sports writers that had it at projected at 220 million, which would be insane. That'd be a $38 million increase from this year's cap. But hey, these are from credible sources. If they're saying there's a chance it could be 220 million, who am I to say that's not true? So what we're gonna do for this video is we're gonna pretend best case scenario. We're gonna pretend the cap goes all the way up to 220 million. It might not, it might only go up to 200, it might only go up to 190. But for this video sake, we're gonna pretend it goes up to 220 million. So let's say best case scenario, $220 million cap, that still leaves the Cowboys with only 19 million in cap space to sign 35 more players. That's not even enough to sign 35 players all to the league minimum. To give you a more visual idea of what I'm talking about, I'm gonna bring the Cowboys depth chart up here on the screen uh, from last year, fully healthy. Now this team, we didn't get a great look at this team because of all the injuries, but I feel like we know what this team is. When they're all fully healthy, I feel like this was a solid team. I know some haters are gonna say like, oh, they're ass, but this team fully healthy could win nine or 10 games, I'm telling you. Between the horrible defensive play calling early on and then all the injuries, a ton of injuries, the whole offensive line missed the game, all five one game. Just terrible luck. We never got a good look at this team. But I'm telling you, this was a 9-10 win team in my opinion. All right, so now I'm gonna switch that from last year's depth chart to this year's depth chart. And honestly, not too much of a difference. In my opinion, the Cowboys had a little bit of a drop off in the defensive line and the secondary. Um, overall though, I think the talent level is going to be similar. Maybe a very, very slight drop off from this year to last year. Now we're gonna fast forward and take a look at the Cowboys depth chart in 2023. Obviously a lot of holes, it's two years from now. That's completely normal. So what we're looking at right here, this would be the team's foundation. This, these 17 players right here are signed for the next three years at least. Uh, this is the foundation of the team. It's the same exact foundation as we have this year, last year. I mean, we're familiar with this foundation. This isn't a new foundation. Any Cowboys fan knows what this foundation can do. Do you want to know how much the foundation costed in 2020? It costed $106 million, and it was surrounded by $57 million worth of surrounding roster. In my opinion, that's about a 10-win team. I know that's being a little optimistic, but in my opinion, they're a 10-win team that foundation surrounded by $57 million worth of help. So you mean to tell me that this foundation, two years later, now costing $200 million, 
and now only surrounded by maybe $19 million worth of help, maybe less. They might not even be able to afford that. Is going to be better than it was two years ago? I mean, some of these guys are deteriorating. I mean, Tyron Smith, Zach Martin, these guys are aging. Zeke's putting on weight by the day. You really think that that foundation is a winning team in 2022 surrounded by only $19 million in help when that team in 2020 with 57 million wasn't enough? I mean, this is just simple logic. It's not enough. That's a losing team. First of all, they can't even afford to field the 52-man roster. So if you're thinking like, oh, they'll, they'll just figure it out. No, what's going to happen is they're going to make a couple bad trades or they're going to cut somebody and just eat that dead cat. Look at the Houston Texans training DeAndre Hopkins. I know a lot of people, there's articles came out that the vice president of the team, like clashing heads. Absolutely not. He said he wanted to raise and pay. Obviously, he needed to be re-signed. The Texans are over the cap, just like the Cowboys. They're not quite as bad, but they're in just as bad a spot as Dallas. They had no chance of signing this guy. So you might as well shed the cap, get something back for him, even if it is basically nothing. That's what you're gonna see Dallas start doing. I mean, we may be looking at the worst team in the NFL in 2023. Some of these moves that they're gonna have to make to put a team on the field in 2023 aren't even gonna make sense. They're gonna trade Amari Cooper for like a fourth round pick or something crazy where everyone's gonna be outraged and everyone's gonna be like, I don't understand it. Is Jerry killing the team when the answer is it's simply money. Now there is one light at the end of the tunnel. There is option A, and I think this is what the Jones family, they all went for, because I know Jerry's aging, win the Super Bowl this year. If the Cowboys go and win the Super Bowl this year, unlikely, but I'm not gonna sit here and say it's impossible. I actually think this team healthy is a pretty solid team. If they win the Super Bowl, then you can sit down with Dak Prescott, Demarcus Lawrence, uh, Jalen Smith, all their big contracts, and maybe work out a few restructures. It's easy to talk a guy into a restructure when the team when things are up, especially after you win a Super Bowl or get close, get to the Super Bowl. Um, these guys will be more willing to take a cut or restructure their deals in a team-friendly way. If that doesn't happen, and I don't think it will. Things are going to get ugly in Dallas. They just don't have the cap space. It's that simple. Obviously, as a Cowboys fan, I'm rooting for option A. I'm rooting for the Super Bowl and the pay cuts and the repeat, possibly. I'm rooting for all that. But as a realist, I'm preparing for option B. Disaster. Here's to seven and nine or seven and 10, I should say.